Next up, we have to talk about air types within JavaScript, and we're gonna combine that with some of the data types that we haven't quite talked about um, up to this point. All right, so air handling in JavaScript is something that a beginner is not going to um, find the value in most likely. I know I didn't when I first started out, I could not understand why we need to handle errors within our code. But there are some really important implications to this. So if you have an external library that you're calling, or maybe you're fetching data from an external database um, or something like that, you don't know what the behavior of that external code is going to be. So it could give you an error. Or for that matter, let's say that you're building an app that's similar to say Instagram and your user who maybe is got some spotty internet at the time is about to press post on their Instagram photo. And as they're pressing post, their internet goes out. All right, so clearly the code that's gonna be run is going to fail. And what we wanna do is handle that correctly. So when you try to post and you got no internet, you're probably gonna see a message on the screen that says something like, no internet, please try again when you're connected. Now that is proper error handling because we have detected that something went wrong and given the user a meaningful message um, for that. Now, if we didn't handle errors and we just you know, ran our code and just you know, threw caution to the wind and said, hope it works, well, in that case, when that user posts the photo and the internet goes out, the whole Instagram app is gonna crash. So we obviously don't want that to happen. That's a terrible user experience. And that is the value of error handling. Now in JavaScript, there are three main types of errors. There are actually more. So if we go to the um, documentation, JavaScript, built-in objects, and then we go to error. Now this is going to be what we call the base class. This is the like, you know, parent air type. And within this air type, there are several um, subtypes of errors that we might see. Now there are three of them that I consider the most common and you'll probably see the most often. And those are the ones that we're gonna talk about here in this video. So the three we're gonna talk about are gonna be the reference error, the syntax error, and the type error. And I'm just gonna walk you through a couple situations where you might encounter these and just explain like what they are. And then finally, we're gonna talk about how to actually handle an error in JavaScript. So the first one is gonna be a reference error. So let's click on that. And this reference error, it says, is going to represent an error where there is a non-existent variable that is trying to be referenced basically. All right, so a good example of that is if we don't have a variable defined, but we try to maybe print it to the screen or use it. So let's just define some variable. We'll set it equal to 20. And when we try to reference that by just typing it into the REPL or the console, it's going to give us a value. But if we were to type in um, another variable and press enter, we're gonna say it's an uncaught, uncaught reference error because another variable is not defined. So when we think of referencing, we're basically trying to find a reference in the computer's memory of that variable. And if we haven't declared it yet, then it obviously doesn't exist and we have a reference or a lookup error. So that's the basics of a reference error. Now a syntax error is the next one. So let's look at that. Um, we'll go back to the main error page, go to syntax error. This is where you're writing invalid JavaScript. So this one's not very hard to replicate. All you have to do is write invalid JavaScript. So um, let's say that we write an object and we set it equal to this right here. So we'll say prop one, some value, and put a semicolon at the end, enter down, and another value, and put another semicolon, semicolon at the end and it's gonna give us a syntax error because these semicolons right here don't need to be there. Those, those should be commas, not semicolons. So we wrote invalid JavaScript and we got a syntax error because of it. So this one's pretty easy. Now the last one, the type error, this one is a little bit more confusing. So let's look at it real quick. Go back to the main documentation, go to type error. Now it's gonna say a type error 
represents an error when the operation could not be performed because you're doing it on you know, a variable or a data type that doesn't have that operation. So something that you might think is going to throw this kind of error is, I don't know, adding two objects together. So let's say that we have object one and we're gonna set that equal to, uh, I don't know, say 20 here. And then we'll come down and do another object. And this is just totally arbitrary. I'm just making some examples. Now, what if we said object one plus object two? You would think that instead of returning this string with like meaningless object uh, notation, we would actually get a uh, type error because we're trying to do something um, that can't be done. We can't add two objects together like this. They're not uh, integers or, or numbers. When you're gonna get a type error is when you're trying to um, pretty much call a method on the wrong data type. So let's say that you have a number, all right? So we'll set that equal to 20. And on that number, you're gonna say two uppercase. Now we know from earlier in this video that two uppercase is a method attached to the string object, not the number object. So in this case, we get a type error because it's not a function. Now this might also happen, um, we have these objects up here and our property on the object is not a function, but if we tried to call it like we call a function, it's gonna give us a type error because prop one is not a function. So that's what a type error is all about. Now, the last thing that we have to talk about is actual error handling. And as we talked about, it's important because you wanna give a user um, the correct message when they you know, run into an error, and you also don't want your application to completely crash every time an error happens because it happens all the time with code. So to do this, we use something called a try-catch block. So the first part, we put um, the word try, and then we put these two brackets. So we enter down, and whatever code goes in these brackets is going to be um, checked for errors. And if there's an error, then it's going to throw that error and send it to the um, catch block. So let's write some code that actually throws an error. So let's say that same example of we have a number, and then we try to make that number uppercase, which is obviously invalid. So we know that's gonna throw an error, but because it's within this try block, we're going to pass that error, it's gonna be thrown, and then this error is going to be um, populated with that new error object. So this could be anything. We could make it E, we could make it error, or ERR, or we could make it error. It doesn't matter, it's just a parameter like we've seen before. So let's enter down into the catch block and now we can actually check to see what this error is. Now, I'm not gonna just console log it because then you might get confused like, okay, what happened? So let's go ahead and um, actually, first let's, let's just cheat real quick. I'm gonna put a var here so that we can use this code block again. Um, so let's press enter and you'll see that nothing, no errors were thrown here. And the reason is we had some invalid code, but it got caught here and then we didn't run any code in the catch block. So if we try this again, no pun intended here, um, we can actually print some details about this error. So let's console.log something um, where we say error is an instance of, we'll say type error. And in this case, it is a type error because we're trying to call a method that doesn't exist on this data type. And this instance of operator is basically going to look at whatever is to the left of it, which is that newly populated error object. And it's going to say, is this an instance of, or kind of like a copy of the template that we call type error. Now that's going to hopefully return true if it does what we expected. And then an error actually has a name um, attached to it or a message. So we can say error.message and print out whatever that error message is. So you can see that if you looked at the um, instance properties, we have dot message, so that's how I knew how to access that. All right, so we press enter, and now we get the value of true because this evaluates to true, and then this sentence right here is going to be the error message. 
So you can see that we have handled an error, what we call gracefully. We have not crashed our application. And this is going to come in handy when we're using external libraries that we don't know how they're going to behave. And finally, kind of going along with these error objects, we didn't talk about those much. We also have three more data types that we have not touched on. So let's clear the screen and look at what we're talking about. The first one is going to be NAN for not a number. So that's actually a data type. Then we have undefined, um, or actually let's go with null. We'll talk, uh, talk about null first. And then we have undefined. And you can see if we go to the documentation, um, we go to the main JavaScript documentation with the built-in objects, you will see that we have not a number right here. So you can see a little bit about that. You can also see if we um, look at the built-in objects that we have undefined somewhere. So here's undefined. And then finally we have null value right here. All right, so these are all, you know, built-in objects. And in, like, when we're looking at this, the null and undefined, I believe, are primitives. So let me just check that, make sure I'm talking about that correctly. So yes, the, the undefined and null are going to be primitives, um, as we talked about a little bit earlier. So let's start with the least common one, which is going to be not a number. So this is kind of something that, it, it, it's not really used all that often. You probably won't even see it all that often. It's just nice to know about because you may get this response um, at some point. So basically not a number is uh, meaning exactly what you would think it would mean. It's saying that something is not a number. So if we had a string and we set that equal to some string and then we tried to coerce, we've done this before, if you surround a uh, number or like a string value. So let's say that we had this number constructor or whatever, and then we pass in a string, but that string is equal to a number value, this is gonna work fine. But if we tried to pass in my string, you're gonna get not a number because you can't possibly convert a string like that into a number. So that's where you might get not a number. You also might get it if you're trying to you know, add uh, that string with a number. That doesn't work either. Um, and then you also will get it if you say my string multiplied by two, divided by two, uh, or minus two. You're gonna get not a number in all of those cases. Again, you're not gonna see this very often, so I'm just gonna move on from here. The next one is gonna be null. So unlike not a number, you're going to encounter null values pretty much all the time. And what this represents, um, how I think of it, is going to be the intentional absence of a value or a placeholder that you put in to a variable. So if you were to define a variable, so we'll say let uh, plate, or no, not placeholder, we'll just say let my number, and then we'll set it equal to null. Um, it says we're redeclaring it because uh, we've already defined my number, so we'll just say num equals null. And we've redeclared this, so I've been typing into this console uh, too much and using the same variables, variables, so let's go ahead and refresh the whole page. All right, so this should work better. We'll say num um, does not equal 20, it'll equal null. So this is a placeholder value, um, and this evaluates to a falsy value. So if we say um, num triple equals false, then it's going to say false because it's not perfectly equal to a Boolean, but we say if num, and then we get into a conditional block, um, we'll console.log this will not be reached because this will evaluate to false. So this block will be reached. And when we press enter, you'll see this will be reached because we said if num, and num e equals null, so it's a falsy value, so this does not get reached. So that's just something uh, nice to know as you're using conditionals. And then finally, we're talking about undefined, which is very similar to null, but instead of being an intentional um, assignment of value, so kind of a placeholder, this is when you just declare a variable. So let's say we 
um, declare a variable called my var and we don't assign it to a value. Now, you've probably been seeing this undefined happen within the console, but that's not actually um, representative of what we're talking about here. So if you were to type console.log my var, you're gonna get undefined and you're gonna get it twice because it always prints undefined within the browser console. But this actually does equal undefined and if you were to pull up this conditional statement again and you put in my var, it's still going to print this else statement because you didn't reach um, this because this evaluates to a falsy value. All right, so that's it for this lesson number six. It was a very long one, um, obviously split up into multiple videos. Um, but if you made it here, congrats. And I look forward to talking about some more complex subjects. We're gonna try to get a little bit away from JavaScript. Um, but in the meantime, I do have some practice problems for you and you can continue on to practice some of the things that we have learned within this lesson. Feel free to reach out on Twitter. I'm at ZG underscore dev. Would love to know what you're working on um, and just let me know there. And that's a great way to stay connected in general. So um, I will see you on Twitter. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching and goodbye.